the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. And of course, I'm with Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you today? I am great, and I am excited, Pete. And I'm not going to ask you to ask me why, because I'm just going to tell you, because I know you was going to ask me anyway. Well, bring it. Tell me. I'm excited. Um, a new meat market opened up just down the street. And this is the kind of things that I get excited about in my mid-40s, right? A new meat market opened up, and, you know, I want to go check out what kind of steaks they have. I know we talked about a really good steak, and every time I see a steak recipe, I'm like, I'm going to send this to Pete. I'm like, ah, it's 2 a.m. I'm, I'm not going to send this to him. Uh, it's kind of weird. Which, why, why wouldn't you be doing that at 2 a.m.? <laughs> right? <laughs> no, so then, uh, uh, so as soon as we're done here, um, I got lunch with my wife, and then after that, uh, we're going to go check out the meat market and see what kind of ribeyes we're going to purchase for having a little cookout tonight. So I'm excited for that. Nice. These are the kind of things that I get excited about these days. That's good. We we all we all need something to be excited about. So it's football, cooking steaks, cooking <laughs> steak, and you're in good shape, all right? This is absolutely yes, sir. This is your kind of weekend. Awesome. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I good. mean, although well, if you're counting calories, you're going to have issues, right? Because uh, yeah, but that's that's you're a, not you're not counting calories. I mean, uh, I count, but I don't do anything with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, 4,000. All right. That's a new record. <laughs> it's more of an observation. <laughs> yes. It's not nothing. <laughs> I don't do anything talent. with that information other than be astonished. <laughs> That's right. So, man, today we are continuing. We're, we did we did this last week. It worked really yeah. well. We got really positive feedback. So we're trying it again where we were just on the uh, the Finding Careers End podcast, and mm -hmm. which is aimed at uh, anyone in the workforce, everyone in the workforce. And we, and, and we talked about the freelance economy. Um, and now we're coming over here to talk about it from the employer's perspective on, on higher calling. So, um, so how do you, how do you, you know, where do you want to go with this today? So, all right. We, we, we talked a, a little bit about it last week and then, you know, so I read the article and one thing I wanted to ask you because I'm reading this and I'm like, okay, it's freelancing worth it. The pros and cons. It, it was published on August 15th over on zingig.com. And as I'm reading it, I'm like, okay, this makes perfect sense. What didn't make sense to me is the author and the author is you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I'm like, why, why is, why is the, the owner of a successful staffing company talking about the pros and cons of freelancing? If anything, I will think, you would write something to say the nightmares are freelancing. That's right. right? Why, why you should avoid freelancing at all costs. Yeah, right? But no, that's not how you wrote it, which which I appreciate the authenticity. That's, that's, that's what I thrive on. But I got to ask, from your perspective, why are you so pro-freelance when you're in an environment where you need W-2 employees. Maybe I'll, I'll ask it that way. So I guess I, the, it, so I, I won't give as, uh, as long of an answer as I, as I did um, have already on this because um, you know, it's, it's great to say uh, that I, look, I want to be open and honest that that's, that's the short answer. I'll just say on, on this and my honest take is um, in many instances, freelancing is an option that I would recommend to people. Uh, mm. I would recommend at times to uh, the workers, uh, those in the labor force, as well as to companies who need to hire. I'm a consumer of freelance talent where it makes sense. Um, so it is not, it's not the right thing, in my opinion, for every scenario. It's not a good fit for every position. It's not... Um, but there's so many factors that go into it in many cases, in many scenarios. I, I do believe it's an option that should be considered. Um, mm. And at times I think it's probably the best option. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of it. And I just wanted to be represent that feeling in, in the most genuine way. But you need W2 employees, don't you? I mean, wouldn't you need W two employees? I mean, well, well I, I mean, I'm just I'm generally asking, right? Because I'm not I'm not doing it rhetorically. Because I'm thinking to run a successful business, you do need to direct the process. You do need to direct employees' work, right? Because sure. as a freelancer, you can't do that. If and and for the people that just who don't know that difference between a contractor and an employee, right? An employee is somebody that from an, a business perspective, you you dictate that person's work, whereas a contractor, 
you don't dictate the work you hire them for their expertise and they handle it like a plumber if you have if you if you hire a plumber to come to your house they're not your employee they're your contractor you just tell them what to do they do what you pay them and that's it that's a great that's a great um way to to phrase it and you know with the plumber i don't stand over their shoulder and and tell them what to do and direct you know their work because they have expertise i don't have they mm. have knowledge i don't have and that is a a, a uh, generally a great um, uh, time to consider a freelancer. Am I able to direct this person's work? Am, do I have the knowledge and experience to guide them on how the job should be done mm -hmm. or do I just need it to be done? And so, you know, I'll give two, two examples. One um, is you, uh, since you're asking why I would do this, I'll say, well, you're, you're exhibit a in this where you were a W2 employee of four corner resources and that was fine, but now you're not, and it's still fine. It, you know, your your function is changed. Wait, no, hold on. I'm not an employee anymore, but I'm fine. <laughs> you're, you're fine. Right. That's not, what did I say? <laughs> no, it just came across as, no, you was a WT employee, and, 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 and you were fine. And it was fine. And, and now, now you're not. <laughs> like, I'm good, man. I mean, <laughs> So now oh, right. I'm about to get okay. stays after this. I'm, I'm it's, 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 a, it's a great day. Let me clarify that a little bit. So <laughs> we are now you are um, a consultant mm -hmm. working with us with under your own um, you know, yeah. tax ID with your own business. And I would tell you our relationship is just as good in many ways better yeah. because now I'm no longer as, as the person, you know, who, um, who requires your, your, your uh, knowledge and skill set. I'm no longer having to pay for things that I, um, that, that I don't need from you. Yep. Every dollar that goes, hopefully, uh, that, that this is how it is working and it's it, how it works when things are, are going well. And, and this type of relationship where every dollar is a dollar well spent yep. and, you know, a dollar, a dollar, uh, worked is a dollar earned. And so there's no, there's no um, ambiguity about that. There's no confusion about the nature of our relationship. You offer uh, of you know, value that my business needs and, and can take advantage of. Therefore, we have a really good relationship and yep. it's at a rate that um, that makes you happy and, and we're willing to pay. So that's it. So that's sort of, to me, what should be the, the, the kind of the key components of, of a healthy working relationship, right? Like what, what are you, what you is the one performing the work or bringing the knowledge to the table. You, you, you put a value on that, the, the market and the individual organization who needs that service um, uh, sets a value on it. Mm -hmm. And if those two sides can agree, then you should work together. It, it, you know, there's some, some extra things, right? You should like each other, you should be able to trust each other, yep. rely on each other. Um, all of those things, but there's no extras that that come with it. So it's all the good without any of the potential drama or baggage that that could otherwise exist. And plus, um, you you I can't I, I I need you or rely on you because you you are able to do things and know things that we're not able to do without you. What we no longer have. Now that you, with you not being a W two employee like you used to be, is um, you know potentially sitting around when you're not needed, right? Getting a paycheck when there's no work to actually be done because you are operating at a strategic level for us, and we don't always need you. So we have we kind of know how much help we need from you on a month to month basis, and that's how we've been working for um, quite a while now, and it's a win win, is it not? It's working beautifully. And, and Pete, you know, I learned that it, it's, it's, I know we, we talked about it on the other show, but I, I I'm not going to call it a skill, but I learned that lesson a long time ago when I worked at um, Orange County government. And, and I can say this now, cause it was so long ago, you know, nobody works for the government to be rich. They work for the government to be, uh, to be stable and have the pension, what I call the P word, because har there's hardly any organization that has a pension anymore. And the benefits, even that's being eroded. But here's what I noticed. Um, the reason I left on my own accord is because I found myself that I can come into the office, I can sit down, not do anything all day long, read the Wall Street Journal, and nobody would notice. Nobody would notice. And I'm not built that way. I, 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 I can't just go in 
right? And just stay there, not do anything and get a paycheck from it. It's just, I decided to say, no, I, I can't just, I have to leave, right? I've got to do something worthwhile. I've got to do something that I'm passionate about. Sitting on my butt reading the Wall Street Journal is not it, right? And this was a long time ago. Right. And then when I was working here, I noticed that I'm, okay, look, I'm, I'm, I'm delivering what the, what the organization needs, but it didn't need as much of my time. Now, again, could I have made some some stuff up if if I was trifling? Then yeah, I could have, right? And eventually you'll figure it out. But that's not how I build relationships because, you know, I'm really big on that. That's why you and I had, you know, actually I approached you. I'm like, look, here's what I want to do. You need this, right? It's got to be a little bit less. I would love to enter into this, you know, transfer this relationship to be this freelance relationship where I can give you exactly what the organization needs. We both agree on it. We're both happy with it. And then I can use my time for other people and do that same thing. That said, I've been wanting to do that for a long time. And I've been prepping on that for a long time. And it took me a long time for me to be comfortable and say, look, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. Well, it's a hard step to take as an individual, right? And as an (laughs) employer, if you're not used to that, uh, this model, it's hard to embrace as well. It seems odd. It's uncertain, you know, scary, whatever it might be. But in in your scenario, the reason why it's such a good example is you uh, were being um, compensated at a high level. You were, you, you, you wanted to perform at a high level, but a business our size with 35 employees we don't need a, a full-time, very senior HR professional. Mm-hmm. When we need one, we really need one. Mm-hmm. So we do need someone with a high level of, of expertise and knowledge to guide us, but um, we don't need it for 40 plus hours a week. Mm-hmm. And similarly, you didn't, so what we what we would have to do, what we used to do um, when you were a W-2 employee of Four Corner Resources, we would fill in that time with um, you know lower level work. Mm-hmm. work that someone a, a, at your um, experience and compensation level, um, we didn't need to pay for someone at that level to do yep. the work that filled in uh, in the blanks, so to speak, or, or the gaps of time, which was significant, which was more than 50% of the time. Yeah. Nor did you want to spend your day doing that stuff, <laughs> right? It was win-win, to so, be honest. Like, I know I'm getting paid to do this stuff yeah. that, that is, that is you know, um, at a lower at a lower level but that's not how I want to spend my day. So you were um, honest about that when you, when you first brought it up that, Hey, maybe you need less of me, right? Effectively. Mm -hmm. Um, But we still need you. So that was, that was such a perfect example. The second one I want to give is, um, is an SEO consultant um, who we've worked with, who um, I've interviewed on, Mm -hmm. on the, um, on the finding careers End podcast, Rebecca Gill. Rebecca is a guru at what she does. She is an SEO expert. Well, as such, she commands a high a high price, right? Mm-hmm. She should. I think we're getting we're getting a, a, any anything we we pay Rebecca is, is dollars very well spent. But um, so she deserves that. She's mm-hmm. earned that. She warrants it. However you want to phrase it. Um, we, but but a business our size doesn't necessarily need that full-time either. Right. And she's at a point in her career where uh, she, she doesn't want to uh, have to uh, continue to do that daily grind of, of working, you know, around the clock for an organization. She wants to have more freedom. She wants to uh, be more selective about who she works with, what projects she takes on. Um, When we started working together uh, a couple of years ago now, we didn't know how it was going to go. And I, and I, that's something I talk about a lot with clients is especially when they drag out an interview process and one, another interview and another interview, as I always say, and I've said for, you know, more than 15 years now, you don't really know what someone's like until you live with them. And, you know, (laughs) you can interview until the cows come home, but until that person is in, in the seat and until they know what it's like to live with you as the employer, it, it, it there's it's still a, a very much a crapshoot. Yeah. So when it, it just like in a, a traditional employee employer relationship, when we started working together, we didn't know how long it was going to last. And every day there's a decision to make. Does she still like working for us? Do we still mm-hmm. like you know, working with her? If yes, we we continue. If there ever comes a day where it's no, and 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 she's she's funny about this, and she says, 
I'm here until you don't need me anymore. Right. Like I will, I will pass on my knowledge to you because again, she has knowledge and expertise we don't have. I couldn't direct and manage her if I if I wanted to. And I'll make sure she listens to this because she'll laugh and and agree that she's unmanageable. Um, <laughs> anyway. um, but it's a it's such a cool relationship because even though we're the just like with you, if I call you for help. If, or if, if, if anyone in our leadership team calls you for help, they need, they need your answer. We don't have the answer. We need, yeah. we can't tell you what that answer should be. That's why we call you similarly with, with Rebecca, when we need her uh, advice on something, we, we're going to take it because that's knowledge we don't otherwise have. So, um, but every day, if, if, if something changes, and let's say you know, if we run out of money or we change direction or any, any, anything like that, or she decides she doesn't like us anymore, or the project gets boring and she wants to go on to greener pastures. That's one phone call. And just like yeah. contract staffing, there's no drama. There's no write-ups. There's no, there's no performance plans. There's none of the things that makes you as an HR professional, you know, I, I just like I wrote in the, in the blog article, um, be so needed at such a big scale within an organization because HR departments aren't large because things go so well between the employee and the employer. Right? <laughs> I mean, I it. love how you put that. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. You're right. You're why right. Why do we right. have so many laws around employment and hiring? Yeah. And why do you see so many lawyers advertising on TV wanting, you know, uh, an employee to sue their employer? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, of course, all the, the government mandated things when it comes to health care and time off and, and sick pay and this and that things that have are making the employee have made the employee employer relationship so much more than just about work. Mm -hmm. Right. It's 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 gone. It's go, it goes way too far, in my opinion. So let's cut to the healthy stuff and, and leave it at that. That, so you made an interesting point there that you're right. It is, it's, it's how she said it, that I'm here until you don't need me anymore. W whereas from a, from a W2 perspective, it's almost, it's the same thing, but it's harder to get to the don't need anymore part, <laughs> right? Because right. if you get there, right, then either you have to let the person go. Um, obviously, if you don't need them anymore and the person is performing, then that's it's not a termination. It's more of a layoff than anything else. And there's some legal hoops that we would have to jump through for that. But just, just think not about that statement. There's legal hoops we have to jump through, yeah. separate employment. What in the world? How do we get here? in a world where the state of Florida is an employment at will state, <laughs> which is an act that says any party can terminate this relationship at any time. Um, that's not protected by law. That, that last part is really that, that, that kind of gets people, but I hear you. I hear you because if you have that freelance relationship, right? All you have to do is say, look, I don't need you anymore. I don't need this Windex until next week. I'm going to put it away in the cabinet. <laughs> I'll forget about it. And I, I, I think that's a bad example, but I think you get what I'm getting at, that it's, it's versus a W-2 relationship that you have to either continue to fill that time because I'm taking the, the, the employee hat off. I'm putting the employer hat on, okay? From an employer, employer's perspective, like anything else in life, if you pay a specific price for a specific service, you expect to get the most out of that service. So in when there's a point in time when there isn't much for this person to do, yeah, I agree that we got to find something for that person to do so those dollars can can stretch out. Versus from a freelance perspective, you know what? I'll talk to you in, in a couple of months when I need something else, and there's no dollars exchanging back and forth, and it's easier to do. You're right; it's one phone call. That's it. We're done. Because let me tell you, being in HR for 20 years, it really is difficult <laughs> to uh, to start having the same relationship you have with a freelance as you do with a W-2 employee. Very difficult. Right, so, but it, but but look at all the the baggage that that goes away with yeah. it. And and, and yeah. you, know, you asked me why I would be a, um, a proponent of this as a owner of a contract staffing business. Well, many of these um, things also apply to contract staffing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, here's here's how I would one of the ways I would differentiate it, right? Because it's not 
it's not for every scenario. Far from it. I, you know, I'm, I'm not suggesting, you know, turn your, your whole business model into hiring freelancers. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Far from it. So yeah. again, it's, it's where uh, you need expertise your organization otherwise doesn't possess that you don't, um, you're not in a position to manage and direct that individual. Um, you know, and, and then also where you know, one of the things is, I think, generally speaking, where you'd need one thing done at a time by one individual versus a team uh, where management and direction and, and structure is necessary because it, 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 you know, that doesn't work, right? You, you know, you don't want to hire um, five independent freelancers to all work on a, so a software project together, right? That, that's a bad idea. If you need one software developer for one project, okay, you know, maybe then. Now, another big factor is, do you have the ability uh, in, you know, to, um, to assess talent? Do you have the ability to, you know, make sure that you're hiring mm -hmm. someone with the, who's, who's fully qualified? So it's not as simple as waving a magic wand. And, and so in most cases, the vast majority of cases, I would still recommend if you are looking to a third party to help with your hiring, you should use, you know, a, a staffing company, you should use an organization like four corner, but when you know exactly who and what you need, and you are willing mm -hmm. to take the time to, to find that person on your own. Because look, recruiting and staffing is a very, very time intensive thing. Mm -hmm. um, then it can be a really attractive, um, a really attractive option. You know what, Pete, I'm going to do something that I hardly ever do. So get ready. Put your seatbelt on. Actually, it's not that bad. You're going um, to eat vegetarian <laughs> all week. And <laughs> What's it, April Fools already? <laughs> no, man, that's not happening. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, no, I um it's, come it's, on, man. There's so much steak talk. I had to I, 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 I gotta to start about that later. Um, no, because I was approaching this show from a from a perspective of if I am a client, if I'm a business, yep. why I need to if if I'm a business, I need to be careful in how I run my business because I don't want with so so much ease ease out there to be a freelancer with uber eats and all and and the gig economy being as big as it ever as big as it ever was before i was approaching this from the beginning of the show from the perspective of from a business owner perspective how am i going to compete with that if i need to keep people employed how am i going to compete with it i'm changing my tune you don't compete with it it's almost better if you just make the switch and work more with freelance because it's just easier. It gets more flexibility. It, it, it's you said it earlier. It depends on the business, right? But it's sounding to me that it's just a lot easier overall um, to just have freelancers come in, do the job, and leave. Obviously, that's that's not all businesses. That's not even the entire makeup of a business because there's some things that you need some people there full time, which well, I completely and, and understand. Only, yeah, only a portion of the jobs. The, 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 you know, if you, you look at a business as a whole, it, I, I would say it would be the not the majority of all functions in a business, right? Okay. So, yeah, I want to want to make that point clear. Well, I say that because you know when when I started to to freelance full time myself, I, it it's it's the floodgates open, which I was very lucky, really really lucky. The floodgates open. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta hire people. And then I realized the way I was set up, it, it, it's uh, for tax purposes, I may have to set up a different LLC or different incorporation um, if I have to hire somebody W-2. But now what I started to do is farm work out to other freelancers, right? Here you go. I don't worry about their taxes, right? I just mean you to conduct this investigation because I don't have time for it. And I have full, I'm not going to bring somebody on board from a freelance perspective if I'm not 100% on point or confident that they got the skill set to do so. So these are people I trust, but they're not employees. I've been doing it for like four months and it, it just hit me right now. That's probably the way to go for me. It can be. It, it if, probably is. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, it, I'm, yeah. Once again, are you turning a task over to them to come back to you when once completed or are you directing them in that effort? And, and I think that you should serve as your guide as much as anything else. Um, mm. You know, do you, uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's a big one. And so when, when, when I think of why freelance and I'd also separate, you mentioned Uber, I'd separate that into a different category, right? Would you? I, because, right. Yeah. Because as we talked about um, a little bit earlier on the other show was, 
if you're going to work for Uber, you you you're an independent you know contractor working for Uber, but you're not you know going from Uber to um, you're working exclusively for Uber. I mean, you could say you're a freelance driver. Maybe you work for Lyft one day and Uber the next. I'm sure people do that. So I guess you're a freelance driver, but you have a finite number of organizations you can go work for, yeah. right? Who are hiring, um, you know, delivery services or, or you know, drivers or, or, you know, um, or just sure as task rabbit. Cause I told you, I just figured out what that was last week. Yeah. You know, but okay. I guess, you know, but that's no, that's a freelance, right? I think ta yep. task rabbit, once you realize, as you see, as, as you told me that it's not, Trained it's rabbits rabbit helping, in, I don't think I helping in the office. I was just joking, yeah. But, um, but I love that your example was a rabbit bringing you a carrot. No, they're not going to eat the carrot. They may bring you anything, anything but a carrot. That's the one thing. Um, oh, that's hilarious. Do rabbits even eat carrots, or is it just bugs? But no, we know they do. But uh, that. Uh, um, I'm questioning that. But but no, if you are, if you know, if you're, if. I think task rabbit is, is an organization that hike. If you, if you need like work done around the house, if you need a handyman service, that sort of yeah. thing yeah. you hire through task rabbit. And if you have, um, I, I mean, so many trade skills are in demand, high in, in demand. I, I'm sure you're part of some of these groups on either Facebook, um, uh, that, that have like neighborhood groups or, um, I'm trying to think of there's an app that I get uh, that it's 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 a neighborhood app, and people yeah. are constantly looking for quality help in every yeah. area you yeah. can you can think of because good help is really hard to find. So if you are an individual who um, is confident that you offer uh, a skill or trade or value that's in the world that's 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 going to be in demand at a rate that others will pay. Mm probably worth considering doing if you're yeah. looking to hire you know i i break it down i could i could go job title by job title and in fact we're doing this on the four corner website right now we're putting a little guide on how to hire by each uh, job title oh, and okay. it's, it, yeah it, we're in the process of building it so, so not all of our um our job description pages have that yet but we're actually rec going to recommend how to hire for each role. Some roles we will recommend considering freelance, knowing that that means they won't go through us. That means no revenue for four corner resources. Huh. But part of my thought process is Ricky, I, I want, if I'm going to say, and as I often will, I think we're your best option. I want it to be meaningful. And the only way that's ever gonna happen is if I'm also willing to at times say, we're not your best option. Yeah. So, you know, if, 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 um, you know, we, yeah, you, the answer can't be the same every time, right? It just doesn't make sense. So this reminds me, and, and this is a legit story. Have you heard of Chance the Rapper? I, I have. All right. Do you know his story on how he became like the rapper that he is today? I, I by, by chance, perhaps. <laughs> Where's where's my where's my real cast so I could do the uh, where's the I'm slow boom. I won't I won't be able to get through it in time <laughs> no I, 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 is that not no no so oh. chance the rapper so where a lot of up and coming artists who have yet to be discovered their main goal is to sell their stuff sell their stuff sell 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 they just nickel and diamond people chance the rapper did it differently what he did is he gave his stuff away he gave it for free his music, gave it away on SoundCloud. He just gave everything away for free because what he was banking was not nickel and diamond people. He was banking on the quality of the music and then later on somebody would notice him. And that's exactly what happened. Somebody noticed him and now he had all these different um, uh, record labels trying to sign him and he had, he was in control. He was in control. He got to pick which one he would do, but it wasn't his marketing strategy per se of nickel and diamond people. It was a different marketing strategy to say this. I want the quality of my work to speak for itself. So what you just said right now about um, putting that stuff out there that may not get uh, the organization any revenue, not immediately. But later on, people are going to remember where they found this from. Yeah, you, and it's the quality heard, of the work. You've heard that expression, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. You've yes. That, right? <laughs> yes, so, I have. I have. Well, I don't want to be that as a staffing company. I don't want mm. to um, 
you know, pretend, you know, the, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, that everything's a good fit for us. And, and I, and I started having this thought because I, I, you're not the first person to question why I would recommend alternative solutions on our own website. But uh, I had this realization uh, sometime within the last year that when, when you take one of our, um, our job description pages, uh, that, that we get a lot of web traffic to, um, uh, take WordPress developer, for example, most of the organization, most of the people who come to that page, whether it's candidates looking for job description information, or we have, we have salary data, we have other things on these pages, mm -hmm. um, or someone who's looking to hire and going to build a job description based on our, our information and help that they can find on that webpage. The vast majority of them aren't going to hire from us. That I know. And I, and I know that mm -hmm. because these pages, in some cases, get thousands of views a month. And we don't have thousands of companies a month hiring WordPress developers from us. So if they're going to come, I may as well give them the information that I think they need and want. So they'll keep coming back because there's going to be a point, hopefully, where they do want to hire from us. They do need to hire from us. So mm -hmm. um, if everyone who came to our website each month, that's, you know, we get over a hundred thousand visits, you know, suddenly wanted to hire from us for whatever position they were looking for, we'd have a capacity problem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll grow to it. We'll, we'll, What's we'll a good problem to, to have. Like that. That's a really good problem to have. <laughs> well, it, it, it would be a problem with no solution immediately. Right. I, yeah. But, yeah. but, um, I, I would rather give them the information. So again, when they, uh, they need to hire, uh, for a role that is, uh, fully within our wheelhouse and in an area of expertise, and we're confident we can deliver. We don't take on positions unless we, we only take on positions we fully intend to fill. And mm -hmm. so that's also why we're not a great fit for everyone. You have to know who you are. So as a staffing organization, we don't, we reject, um, you know, being one of 20 vendors, for example, in a scenario, it's not what we're here to do. We're here to you know, work with, you know, in where we're, we're actually a partner um, and not just a vendor. Now everyone says that, well, trust me, put us to the test. We'll turn you down. <laughs> if, you wanna, if, if you want us to just be another vendor. Um, and the reason is because uh, we, we can't be effective that way, right? We can't yeah. be effective on behalf of our candidates and, really for our clients and you know, who wants, no, no one wants a staffing company. You, you think you do. And if you're listening and you, you're someone who thinks the more vendors the better, and I'm going to squeeze them on price. You were telling me right before we started recording that you encountered a, 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 an opportunity recently through one of your, one of your clients where their the staffing a recruiting firm is, is recruiting at a, for a 8% placement. Fee. Oh right? yeah. 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 So I was, uh, I I was talking to a client, um, actually, it, it, and and they needed recruiting services. I'm like, good. I know somebody who can take care of this for you. And they're like, look, this other company told me um, that they could do it for eight percent. We need it for five. And I'm like, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm not gonna waste your time or anybody else's time because it's it's the recruiting fee is much higher than that, right? And yeah. Like, it, it, so yeah, it, it's. Uh, I remember that vividly. Yeah. If you if you're looking to hire a firm to do recruiting on your behalf and they're they're offering you fees uh, in that range, you know you should you should run away. Um, and <laughs> for us, what what I because I you know occasionally will be presented with that. Hey, if you'll do it for X, you know fee, which is significantly lower than what what the market is, uh, we'll say well, you don't want that because you want our best effort. Yeah. Right. I mean, and and that's the same thing with when it comes to the advice we try to give on the website, you don't, you want the best answer. And so you're going to keep coming back. Um, and most of the time it's not going to be freelance, truth be told. In many cases it will be, it is a growing market. It is, I think the future of, of the workforce in America um, for all the reasons we've talked about it is it strips away all of the bad components of the employee employee mm -hmm. relationship and just leaves the good. And who wouldn't want that? Yeah, you're changing my tune on that, man. <laughs> you are. No, because it, it's, again, from somebody who is a freelancer, I get what you're saying, but somebody who at some point, I, I am going to need a huge team, just not right now. I understand the pros and cons of that, right? Especially with the team, you know, and, and, and jumping through all those loopholes when you don't need that team anymore. 
Um, something you said that kind of piqued my interest as far as um, uh, actually that I appreciate about how you handle um, situations with um, companies that overpromise. Because in my previous life, when I would use other staffing agencies before I knew about Four Corner Resources, um, I would be skeptical when they say, "Oh yeah, 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 we can handle six six hundred people a month." And I'm like, "Really?" Okay, let's see what you got. And next thing you know, you 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 put the ink to paper, and I only got maybe two percent of that. And I'm like, God, I should have listened to my gut. So I appreciate you saying that. That look, if that's too much, we're not going to be able to do it. If it's a capacity issue, we can grow to it. We're not going to do it. But it, it's it's I do appreciate that from a business owner's perspective, because me, somebody who relies a lot on trust and um and relationships, if I see that you've got my best interest at heart, not just to line your pockets, but to you have my best interest at heart, then the trust factor is there. You're who I'm going to work with from now on. Sure. So for, from, from, from a freelancer perspective, I, I was telling you this story earlier where the one client kind of overpaid me. Um, and I'm like, what is this? And I give it back. And he was shocked that I give it back. And because I could have easily found somewhere else to throw that money in there. But I went ahead and give it back that builds relationships. So I appreciate how you handle that. And you have the open and honest conversations. And I heard you say it a couple of months ago at a um, at a, uh, uh, a monthly staff meeting when you said something to the effect that we're not going to be able to work with everybody, right? It's not all about the dollars and cents. We want to be able to help organizations fill that void. And if we're not able to do that, that's okay. That's yeah. perfectly okay with it. Well, I mean, make no mistake. We're not a charity organization. That, it's that's a for-profit organization. Absolutely. Yeah. And we don't apologize for that ever. But the point is we want, we want to enter into, um, relationships that do become partnerships. And so yeah. it's got to be a good fit on both sides. So yep. I'd rather have fewer clients that are, that are, that are stronger relationships than, 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 than many. I mean, I think everyone wants that, right? I, I don't think that's, I don't think any of these things are unique, I, but I think what's different for us is we're at a size where we can not get blinded by that. You know, if the organization's, if an organization's too big, I think it's very difficult for that to permeate through the whole organization. And, and, you know, you start to you know, manage by metrics and, and numbers. I mean, that's the downside of a really large organization. You can't be personal in your yeah. approach. You can say you are, but you can't be where we can do things like change a contract in in five minutes, right. Or, yeah. you know, right. trust me, the, the, when I worked for a company with 16,000 employees prior to starting four corner, I could not change a contract in five minutes. In fact, <laughs> I had to enter a queue. I mean, it's crazy to say like now, because I've been away from that for so long, I had to go to a web internal web page, fill out a form, and I would be queued up to wait for an available attorney to review my question. <laughs> I mean, what a shock that that company is not thriving. I don't no, know. <laughs> Well, let me tell you that it's I learned it with you last year, right? Because me coming from from corporate America, where it took six months to make a change on something. I think you and I were talking about something on a Tuesday. And I'm like, Roger that we'll get that taken <laughs> care of. On Thursday, it already happened. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what? The right. attorney never reviewed it. We never got a hold of compensation. And he, he and you're like, no, Ricky, we got this. It's and I'm like, my neck broke, Pete. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, whoa, that's news to me, right? So I get that because with, with a with a freelance relationship, you're able to do that so long as both parties agree. Because even as a W two employee uh, agreement, even if both parties agree, you still have some kind of legal hoops to jump through <laughs> to make sure that is done properly. Oh, I think you just said it in the most sim simplistic and effective, accurate way. As long as both parties agree. Mm -hmm. No outside, no government influence, no mandates, no right. laws, no policies. I mean, sure, I'm sure there are. That, that, you know, forever they, for anyone in the who knows uh, more about the intimacy or the legal aspects of freelancing. Don't don't quote me on this. I'm a consumer of it. Um, of freelance uh, employees, um, I won't call them employees of freelance work. I always make that mm -hmm. mistake because they're not employees. Me too. It's okay. And me that's too. it. They're not employees. Yeah. So even though I'm the client. And I'm the one paying. Uh, it's more of a peer relationship, which is how it should be, right? Where my SEO uh, consultant, who I mentioned earlier, she will tell me no, 
she will overrule me, even though, again, I'm the one writing the check. <laughs> but that's the nature of the relationship. Yeah. She's there because she knows best. I won't overrule you on an HR issue. I mean, I could. You'd probably you could. you'd probably you'd probably stop working with me if it put <laughs> your but think about it. If if it yeah. if if because then it wouldn't be a healthy relationship at that point. So yeah. why would I? Why I wouldn't want you in that in the role if I thought overruling you was a viable option, right? Mm -hmm. And and you know, and look, I mean there's things where you'll say. You could do it either way. I recommend this. Okay. And then there's other times where you'll say, no, the safe route, the, the only logical route is to go this way. And then well, I'm not going to dispute that. That's what you're there for. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's, those are some of the, 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 the reasons why it could be, it could be a really, really healthy thing. And if you haven't explored it, if you, if you're new to mm -hmm. it, if this concept is completely foreign to you start learning about it because it's going to catch up and you don't want to be the last one on this train that, that I, that I know. Well, I got to tell you, um, I am looking at it differently because it, it's, and again, I'm being serious before we started on this, on this call, <laughs> before we started on this podcast, I'm thinking about the employer and how they're going to combat it. And now I'm thinking how they can embrace it, just embrace it just on their own. And again, if you're that business owner, you're that business leader, take a look at your, your internal structure, where you want your organization to be in five years, and maybe that's going to help you. Maybe maybe the, the gig economy, the freelance work would help you between now and then, and then later on you build that team. But there's a lot of great uses for it because this is my first time seeing it from a, a consumer perspective uh, versus me being the actual freelancer, which, they, which you know, according to, 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 to the article, you put some pros and cons on there from the freelancer perspective, how much hard work it goes into, the different hats that you have to wear as an entrepreneur. But let me tell you, as a freelancer, it's the best thing ever for me. It yeah, really is. Not for and everyone. For you, it, no, it's, it's definitely not. And then for you as the business owner, it's the best thing for you as well, because whenever you need something from me, hey, Ricky, it, it's to you have some time. And one and one of the things of the rules that I have with my clients is always respond to your clients as soon as possible. You never let the get the day go without responding to your clients. And that's where we got such, such a great relationship. But that's what this is working between you and me is because we both agree it's working well. And hopefully if anybody else decides to go that route, it'll, it'll work well for them. So I really like this article. You, I definitely changed my tune on it. I appreciate right. that. Good, good to hear. All right. I Problem solved. It. So yes, get, get, on, get on board and, and, um, you know, do it selectively. That's the last thing yeah. I want to say. This is not, <laughs> this is not making a case to wholesale. You're going to swap out any internal team. I, I, I think I said it earlier, but in case I didn't, I want to make that point. Yeah, for the foreseeable future, I still believe it will be you know a um, uh, a relative small percentage of of the uh, the employee base in any organization, right? And we don't have time to go title by title. But if you go on the four quarter site, give us a give us a month or or so to get get all these pages updated, and you look at our job descriptions, we're going to do exactly that. We'll we'll recommend job title by job title, because that's a real way to look at it and then uh, see if it makes sense for you and, and for the, um, you know, for your organization. Awesome. So that's awesome, it. Awesome. I think, yeah. I think we have it covered. Well, Ricky, thanks so much as always. Um, everyone who's listening, drive safe, you know, please rate and review us, email us. Cause we are going to do a Q and a um, very soon. We are going to do it on this show. And sometimes, yes. And sometime <laughs> in September for sure. Um, so please email us higher calling at fourcornerresources.com and have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Have a good one, folks. Good night.